Hello everyone out there. This is Pastor Tony Galanti coming back again with uh, Prophecy in Christ with another video. Um, today I'm going to be talking about a subject, <clears throat> or actually three subjects, uh, and, and it's in the realm of balance, you know, um, and integrity within the churches today. Uh, what it is is this. <clears throat> If you believe in the Word of God as a Christian, and you should, because you if you if you don't, you're you can't be a Christian. Honestly, that's what the Bible teaches, right? But if you believe in the Word of God, <clears throat> you have to believe what it says. Okay, point blankedly. Now the situation is this: there are things going on today in the modern church, could I say, or things that are not going on? It's on both sides. Things that are going on, things that are not going on, that should be going on in the church today, and yet they're not, okay? So I'm going to show you the three main points, or the three main things that I see in the churches today that are not taking place, okay? And we all need to exercise these things, okay? Your pastor needs to do this. You need to do it within your, within your own families, too. Um, and the problem is, it's not happening many times. Some people do this, and some people don't. And the ones who are brave enough to do it sometimes are misunderstood, and the ones who are, are doing it are also are also being, sometimes they're getting a, a backlash for doing these things, okay? But before, before I get into this, I am going to please tell you to subscribe. Okay, subscribe to my channel, hit the button, hit the button, and I want to thank all my subscribers, and all those that view my channel too, okay, but hit the subscribe button, ring the, hit the little bell, and this way when a new video pops up, you'll get, you'll be notified, okay, thank you very much, okay, now, what are the three things I want to talk to you about, well, I'm going to read a little passage to you, here in 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy, <clears throat> where Paul is talking to a young pastor. But all of us are supposed to be somewhat leaders within our families and so on and so forth, okay? Children growing up and so on and so forth. And it's in 2 Timothy chapter 4, okay? I'm going to read verses 1 to 4, okay? And it says here, I solemnly, I solemnly charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom. Okay. Preach the word, be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort. Okay, with great patience and instruction. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. And we're in that day and age, if I could say that. But wanting to have their ears tickled, they will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance to their own desires. Okay, and will turn away their ears from the truth, and will turn aside to myths. Okay. Now, what is the verse I'm going to point out here? Point out of these of these four. It's the second verse. But I want you to realize, Paul is saying here, there's going to be a time where sound teaching, sound doctrine is not going to be taught. People are going to, ministers are going to not teach you the proper things. And, or, or they're not going to do the proper things. And they're not going to be responsible. They're going to look responsible, but there's going to be a very strong imbalance here. They're not going to teach you about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. They're not going to teach you that the word, the Bible is truly from God, the word of God. They're not going to tell you that, um, they're not going to talk about the, you know, you know, the virgin birth, death, burial, resurrection. The Bible is the word of God. Uh, the resurrection truly took place in physical form. Jesus Christ is the God man seated at the right hand of the Father. Some don't even mention he's coming back. It's just ridiculous. 
So these things are going to happen, and they're going, they're happening right now, because people want to be encouraged a great deal, and I'm going to get into that in a second here. But I want to tell you this. In verse 2, it says here, preach the word. This book needs to be preached, okay? And you need to preach it to your kids. Fathers, husbands, you need to have an overview of your own family and do it the same way too, verbally, as well as in action. Because you know what? If you don't verbally say it, they're not going to get it. I guarantee that. Because this is the word of God, not the action of God. Okay? First came the word, then the actions. Okay. Now, <clears throat> preach the word, be ready in season and out of season. That means every time, all the time, no matter what. Reprove, rebuke, exhort. Those are the three words I want to show you. Okay? And do it with patience, with great patience and instruction. Okay. Now. The thing is this, the word, what does the word reprove mean? Okay, that's the first word here. And you see Paul put these down in order. There's an order here, okay? Okay, and there's a reason for the order. He didn't put rebuke first, he didn't put exhort first, he didn't do that, but he put reprove first, okay? Now what is reproving, basically? To reprove means to warn. I'm just going to give it to you in a nutshell. To warn. There's an incorrect behavior, warn them. Warn them. Pastors need to warn you when things are wrong. If you're headed towards sin, they need to warn you. Many times today when we get in sermons and so on and so forth, everything is uplifting and encouragement and wonderful and wonderful and wonderful. But you know what? The problem is, is the church is suffering in sin. The church is suffering. The, the world is suffering because of this. Okay. Everything's exhortation. Everything's encouragement. It's out of balance. We need to reprove, too, okay? The problem is people are not doing that, and that's a sign, if I could say the word, of the end times. Right there is a sign of the end times, okay? We're not reproving. Kids are going to secular school, and they're learning to do whatever they want, and the parents just go along with it because, you know, everybody's got to, they have to have friends, and they have to have this, and they have to have that. They all need to be told, don't take drugs. Stay on their back about them. Explain to them, don't take drugs. Don't break the law. Stay on their back about it. Do not break the law. The problem is, is nobody's doing this. Very few people are doing this. Okay? And, and this is the problem. The parents are afraid to come out with these things, and, and the kids laugh at them. Well, you see, society today is making, if you, you see this on the commercials on TV, Society is pumping into their kid, your kids' heads that the father is stupid and the mother is just kind of ignorant, but the kids know better. You ever see commercials where the kid knows more than the parents? That's really not really, that, that's what they're pumping into their heads. The parents are supposed to be directing the children, not the children directing the parents, okay? According to the Word of God. Please understand that this is a serious matter, okay? And the pastors need to be responsible, too. Sometimes pastors are afraid of certain things. They're afraid of, you know, their in, you know, the income of the church. So they don't do any of these things. I've heard people saying, well, I don't want to reprove. I don't want to rebuke. Because you know what? They can sue the church. Well, you know what the Bible says? Do it. Sorry to say. Do it. Okay? Now, that is to pretty much warn a person. Okay? If a person doesn't get the warning, and you know what happens too? I've seen this, another thing. Rather than tell a pastor or a minister or a leaders in the church, tell a person about something, they make them feel uncomfortable and try to oust them out. Well, they're being irresponsible, as well as the person who might be doing something wrong. And maybe the person is not doing something wrong, but they're being told they're doing something wrong, and they try to oust them out, and just to keep everything at peace in their own little you know, they're in a little pocket there, which is not right. This is not according to the Word of God. That's kind of cowardly to tell you the truth, okay? <clears throat> now, the second word is rebuke. Rebuke. This word is a lot stronger than the first word. It's not a warning. It's an actual scolding. This person sins, and they ignore. There's no repentance. There's no person saying, there's nothing in their heart that says, I'm sorry, I did something wrong. You need to rebuke them. You need to tell them. You need to show them. This is wrong. 
this is not what God's word says you need to be doing. Some people think that today they could say whatever they want because they're Christians. You know, everything's under the blood and they can say what they want. Do not test God. If you test God, you are not doing the right thing and God will throw a discipline on you that you have never seen before, okay? If you are truly saved. If you're not, he's going to throw a judgment on you. So don't play games with God. It's very incorrect to do this. Now, I know this sounds very negative, but let me say something to you. I assure you this is a positive thing when you really, truly look at it. You've got to really look at it for what's here in the sake of truth, okay? Because, you know, we as Christians are all justified through Christ. And justification comes from justice, okay? And justice makes us all happy when it's proper, when it's proper, proper properly done. And it's God the Father is telling, God the Father looks at us if we're truly believers, he sees us sin, we, we repent of that sin, we go to Christ, we ask him forgiveness, and then the Lord forgives us, okay? If we, you know, if we sin, go to God, confess your sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, okay? And move on. Now, the problem is, is sometimes a person's getting rebuked or reproved and they get into this, oh, I'm getting people looking at me and I'm getting people coming after me and I'm getting people trying to hurt me and all this other stuff. I'm sorry to say, you need to look at the Word of God. You need to look at Jesus Christ. Now, there are others out there who try to do this on purpose, gang up. This is wrong, too. You can't gang up on people. you got to be polite. It says here, patience and instruction. Okay? So that's very important, too. The word rebuke is almost an extinct word. And the word reprove is almost an extinct word today in Christianity, which is really not good. This is why we're having so many morality problems. This is why we're having so many difficulties and so many separations and so many divorces and so many of everything that's going on. Children are being, you know, children and parents are not getting along. And that's all another prophecy that's taking place in the end times, too. And it, it just goes on and on. It just goes on and on. So we need to make sure we do reprove, we do rebuke, and we're supposed to exhort too, okay? Exhortation is more like an encouragement, okay? Uh, it's to be entreated. It's to be pleased. It's to be told, please, Let's work this out. They reject it. It's their problem. Okay? Then it has to lead to either reprove or rebuke. Sometimes you need to just walk away for good. And that's it. End it. And be strong enough. And let the Lord take care of the situation. Okay? Let the world take care of that person and wake them up. Okay? Spiritually speaking. Because God is going to turn things around. And let me tell you this, too. <clears throat> Some people will say, well, this is Paul telling Timothy, a pastor, to do this. No, that's yeah, true. He's telling him to do that. But he's also saying here, um, I charge you in the presence of God and of Jesus Christ, okay, who is to judge the living and the dead. Are you living? If you're living, you need to be listening to this too. This is not the pastor's book. This is your book to apply in your life and my book to apply in my life, okay? First and Second Timothy and all the epistles, everything in the Bible needs to be applied. And let me tell you another thing too. <clears throat> did you know, some people may know this and some people may not, but did you know that the Apostle Paul actually rebuked the Apostle Peter at one time? Some people say he reproved them, but... Paul really went, it's his face to face, chin to chin. That's a Mediterranean term saying, in your face. I went up to him in his face and I told him this. Because what he was doing was wrong. He was with, <clears throat> he had Gentile believers and he also had Jewish believers. And what Peter was doing was he was taking the partiality to the Jewish believers. But Paul says, wait a minute, that's not the way it's supposed to be. Those Gentiles are saved by the grace of Jesus Christ as well as these Jewish believers, all right? And it says that even Barnabas, 
You know, Barnabas is in the Bible, right? The son of encouragement. Barnabas was even taking Peter's side. And Paul stood up to him and told him, this is wrong. You know, it's almost kind of like a little bit of a sense of prejudice there, if I could say. Or partiality. Or politics. Politics don't belong in the church. Politics don't belong in Christianity. Politics do not belong near any part of Christianity. And I've seen tons of it out there. Please stop it. For the sake of Christ, stop the Stop the politics in the church. Stop it. Snuff it out. It needs to be gone immediately. It's destroying things. It's destroying people. Sometimes people come in, they're, they're brand new to the church, and, you know, maybe they're dressed a little differently and people don't want them there. I, I, I've, ex I've heard this. I actually have a niece who's gone something, who went, who went through something like this. You know, everybody was all dressed up in their nice, you know, designer clothing and church. And she didn't have those designer clothing, that kind of designer clothing. Well, what happened was she felt, they made her feel uncomfortable and she never went back. Until many years later, she got saved. Okay. That was a time that years later, that was a time that's on their back in the sight of God, I believe. Okay. So, <clears throat> you know, it even says here, in the book of Galatians, it's actually Galatians chapter 2, verses 11 to 14. And in, in the New American Standard Version, it says here that um, the Apostle Peter was condemned. All right? He stood condemned. Now, I want to clarify that for you, okay? Because I want you to understand this. Nobody has a right to condemn you or me in any way, shape, or form and say, you're, you're condemned to hell, or you're condemned to, you know, you're going to go to hell, or these kind of things. Nobody has that right, biblically speaking, no one. They have to stand before God. They have to stand before Jesus Christ. They know, Jesus Christ knows their life. He knows all the details of their past, present, and future. Nobody has that right. But that's not what Paul was saying to Peter, okay? What Paul was saying to Peter is, this action is bad, it's wrong, it needs to stop immediately, okay? And, you know, let me get to the part of the exhortation, okay? Exhortation is very important, very important to encourage and, you know, uh, guide in a positive manner and say, wow, you did a good job, or wow, you did a great job, and so on and so forth. But if it's all that, now you're going to, now you're actually making a person so sensitive to that, that if they don't get that all the time, they're not going to be able to perform properly without it. Okay? It's a balance. It's, it's the, biblical, biblical, the biblical side of, of life is to confront, confrontation, and encouragement. Something's wrong, you confront them and say, look, I expected better than this, better from you. In this case, you could do better than this. Now you're encouraging them. I know you can do better. I've seen it, you know. Confrontation and encouragement. But you got to show them where they're wrong at times to give them the right direction to go into. But what's going on today in churches is exhortation, exhortation, encouragement, 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 encouragement. And their church, their marriage is breaking up left and right. And their churches, I've seen this, churches breaking marriages up left and right. That's a major disgrace. They don't even sit down and talk to both spouses. They talk to one side and that's the end of it. That's, that's crazy. It's wrong. It's wrong. Now, I want you to understand, this is not judgment. Like I said, you don't have a right to judge a person and say, you're going to hell. No, that's, that's totally wrong stuff. You don't do that. Now you're putting your, you're testing God when you do that. And you're putting yourself in a very bad position. Ultimately, God will get to the situation if you have that attitude. Okay? You know, it's like Cain and Abel in the, in, the, in the Old Testament. Do you know that Cain, you know that Cain killed Abel, right? Okay. So now, the problem is Abel is dead. And Abel is trying to help Cain and giving them right sacrifice, you know, which was a blood sacrifice, supposedly, to show that you know, that we needed a blood sacrifice for the forgiveness of sin, which pointed to Christ. It was like a type, you know. But then, <clears throat> it 
to replace Abel, per se, because of the two boys, you know, those two boys, you know, Cain killed Abel, Seth came along. Okay, so Seth was the third child, okay? But you know that all of Cain's inheritance, I mean, all of Cain's heritage, all of his children and his children's children and children's, they all died in the flood. They didn't come up, they didn't move on from there. We're all here through Seth. We're all here through Noah, okay? But through Seth. So that is a very important thing. God will eventually catch up to the situation. And don't think you're scot free because you're not, okay? Yeah, you know, and you gotta, and and if you feel that way, if you feel like you 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 need to repent of it or confess it, confess it and move on. Don't sit there and get buried by it, because this is what the Christian life is. You know, sometimes we sin, confess it, and move on. Okay. So, I just wanted to leave you with this, because this is a very very important condition today, the condition of. We're getting all encouraged, we're getting all encouraged, we're getting all encouraged. And there's no, you know, there's no direction, very little direction. People don't have the proper direction. I've seen in churches, okay, where, and I'm not against contemporary music in churches, believe me, okay. I like the old-fashioned stuff too. But I have seen contemporary music you know, the music uh, group or whatever, they make their own little songs and they make their own songs for the church. Worship, 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 okay? But the problem is, is these many, some, I've seen these songs being doctrinally inaccurate, incorrect. And that's when the pastor needs to say, I want to know the words to this song so you're going to sing on Sunday. You better get them to me. And he needs to check them out from head to toe. And if they're not checked out from head to toe or they're inaccurate, he's going to have to say, you need to change these words or you're not going to, speak, you're not going to sing the song. So do something about it because it's inaccurate. Okay. I've seen that too. What am I trying to say? We're in the end times here and, the, and things are getting worse. They're not getting necessarily better. But I'm going to tell you something. We're getting closer and closer to the rapture. And please understand that the rapture will come. It's very, it's coming very soon. It could come within the next decade, I believe. Okay? Give or take. So please keep looking up to the Lord Jesus Christ and his coming. His second coming. And some churches don't even preach. Okay? Now, I want to tell you something. You know how I mentioned doctrine? Okay? And teaching and rebuke and saying... Uh, I wrote this book called Raw Christianity, The Way Jesus Christ Expects Us All to Know It, okay? For the Christian, the non-Christian, and even the skeptic, I've had people who are agnostic read my book, and they said, you know, this book makes more sense to me than anything else I've ever read or heard. I'm not joking you, okay? So please read this book. Get this book. It's, 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 um, the publisher is Zulon Press, and the word Zulon is X-U-L-O-N, okay? doesn't start with a Z. It's X-U-L-O-N. And my name is Tony Galanti. G-A-L-A-N-T-E. There's an E at the end, okay? Uh, sometimes uh, people put it a Y and it's just, you know, whatever. But anyhow, get this book because this book will show you tons and tons of stuff, Okay? Jesus Christ, because he is God, has the power to raise the dead. Okay, um, Jesus Christ will judge all the nations of the world. I mean, it goes on and on. It's, it talks about who Jesus Christ is. It talks about why the Bible is truly the word of God. It talks about who the Holy Spirit is. It talks about the Father and how the Father sent Jesus Christ. It talks about the, the, the tests of why the Bible is really the inspired word of God, that God breathed. This book is breathed. Okay, from God. God breathed his word into this. And when we accept him as Lord and Savior, we are indwelled with the Holy Spirit. Not some spirit out there, but the Holy Spirit. God himself. Okay, so we need the word of God, and then we're indwelled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit opens our eyes, and uh, I mean, the book goes on and on. Um, 
you know, master teachings of the doctrine of sin. Okay. Um, he goes, uh, master teachings of the doctrine of the true origin of man. Okay. I've studied so much science, secular science. I know about uh, evolution and I know about creation and creation destroys evolution by far many, many, many times over. Okay. As a matter of fact, last night I was reading an article on, uh, you know, they take the, they're taking all the bones and all the skulls and everything else of previous, you know, millennia of men, you know, million, you know, thousands and millions of years ago, whatever it was. And they're saying, when you really look at it, there's nothing fitting. Well, I wonder why. Because the Bible says God created man. That's why. Okay. But this also talks to you about, this book also talks to you about eschatology and what heaven's going to be like. Do you ever get taught what heaven's going to be like? Maybe I should do some videos on that too. Uh, the New Jerusalem and so on and so forth. It goes on and on and on. I mean, it's, it's just, if you, if you read this book, you are going to know as much, if not more, than many pastors. I, ca I guarantee that, okay? Because when I was ordained, believe it or not, I had to defend my faith for a total of 12 hours. And then I was also by 40 men, 40 ministers. And then from there, I had to defend my faith in front of the church for four hours. And I am not trying to brag or boast. Please believe me. But they told me I passed with flying colors. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's not just I knew the answers. I mean, I you have to figure this stuff out as people are popping questions to you. And sometimes they'd ask you two or three questions at once, and you have to go boom, boom, boom. So I am telling you that God has blessed me greatly. And let me tell you something else, too. Before I became a Christian, I couldn't even get up in front of a group of people. You put me in front of 50,000 people and I'll preach my, I'll preach, I'll preach to them all night long. Okay. Because the, the Lord is the one who gave me the gift to do this. And I'm going to do it no matter what, because I love the Lord and I love you. Whether you know it or not, we may not know each other and that's fine. But I know if the Lord loves you, I have to, I love you too. And I'm commanded to love you too. Okay. So anyhow, Please subscribe, okay? Please subscribe. So make sure you remember the three things, the three things in proper balance, okay? Three things. Thank you. Lord bless you. Have a great week. I'll come out with another uh, video pretty soon, possibly next week, okay? Thank you. Bye-bye now.